I have a rare success story to report. If you've been following us for a little while, you'll know that we've been having an engine overheating issue all winter, and there's seemingly been no rhyme or reason to it, which has had me very confused. Sometimes it doesn't start until we're under higher RPMs. Sometimes it doesn't go on until we're under lower RPMs. Back on cloud, as I continue to troubleshoot what is causing our engine to overheat, I just refilled the coolant and I'm gonna fire it up to see if our descaling from last time made any difference. If not, I've got this, an infrared thermometer, so I can take a reading directly off the engine and see what temperature it's operating at. There it goes. And then I started to notice that it was even tripping as soon as I turned on the engine when it had been sitting cold for days, even weeks. And that started to get me thinking that it was just an electrical issue and that our engine wasn't actually overheating at all. Something definitely seems fishy. Even after I turned off the engine and let it cool, as soon as I cut the engine back on, it was already overheating, which makes no sense. This has been really, really frustrating. But as with a lot of lows, I'm thankful for it because I've actually learned a lot through this experience about how a lot of these components work and how to troubleshoot them. And I'm hoping I can share a little bit of that with you now. So let me run through chronologically what happened in my thought process through all of it. Everything seemed to be operating normally when the alarm first tripped. And I wanna point out that when it was tripping, it was very jittery. The light wasn't solid and the alarm wasn't sounding clearly. It was very skippy. The light was kind of coming in and out and the alarm never reached its full decibel level. So I wasn't quite sure what that meant at the time, but the first thing I noticed was that we were discharging raw water. Our cooling system is seawater cooled, if you're familiar with these. On a seawater cooled engine, there's actually two different systems at play here. There is the fresh water, which is the coolant that you pour into your engine. That is actually what is cooling the engine. This is a closed loop circuit. The fresh water is just circulating through the engine jacket and keeping all those components cool. What the seawater is doing is coming in and cooling that fresh water, which can then continue to circulate. And so first thing normally you check when you have an engine overheating or the alarm going off is your salt water side. That's usually the first thing to go, whether you have a blockage at the through hole Sometimes you can have a blockage somewhere along the line up to the engine itself. More often than not, it's just the impeller. You can have some broken blades or it can be seized, something like that. I descaled the engine and you can see how I did that in a previous episode. I'll have a link to, to that in the description below. I descaled it. I checked the impeller. The impeller seemed fine. I checked the hoses for any blockages. I checked the mis mixing elbow. Everything seemed good. The entire raw water line seemed free of any blockages or corrosion that can build up. These are all things you wanna check. So I was a little bit puzzled. That led me to the freshwater side. And there's a lot of things along here that can go wrong too, whether it's the freshwater pump, which is driven by the V-belt. So Janie and I tightened that up. It was a little bit loose. And so if that's not tight, your freshwater pump might not be circulating the coolant. So right now Chris is pushing the alternator back over to tension the belt and I'm locking it down with the wrench. Yes. Alright. Tightened that up, alarm was still going off. Hmm. Okay. That's when I took apart the thermostat and tested that on the stove to make sure that it was opening at the correct temperature. How to test your thermostat. If you don't know where stuff on your engine is, just reference your engine manual. That's gonna tell you where the thermostat housing is. You're gonna open that up, remove the cap, and pull out the thermostat. Then you're gonna suspend it in a pot of water on the stove or a hot plate, something that you can heat up. And you're gonna, again, reference your engine manual. That is gonna tell you at what temperature the thermostat begins to open. And you're just gonna cross-check this with a thermometer. I'm using an infrared thermometer as you can see and you're just going to make sure that it's opening when it's supposed to open and then it's going to be fully open right around where it says it should be fully open. If this all checks out then the problem is probably not your thermostat. It seemed to be operating normally. I ordered a new thermostat. Haven't even put it in yet because I think I found the issue. Ordered a new temperature switch. Haven't even put this in because I think I found the issue. Which leads me to another thing that I had no idea about. You hear 
thermostat, temperature sender, temperature sensor, temperature switch. I had no idea what any of this was. I thought it was all one thing, and turns out it's not. This gets very confusing because you have a, a sender and a sensor. And sometimes you may have one or the other or both. Maybe you have neither. Hey, Chris in the editing room here because I have this totally wrong. There is a temperature switch, which we have, and then a sensor slash sender. Sensor and sensor, sensor and sender can be used interchangeably. The switch is either on or off. This is what trips the alarm and light at your engine panel. And the sensor slash sender is what can give you an actual temperature reading and tell you what the temperature is. Here is an unused port where we could put the temperature sender and we would just take out this plug and then screw in a sending unit or that would lead to a gauge. So in learning this, I realized, I was slowly realizing that this was all coming down to the sensor. What really woke me up to this is the alarm was tripping as soon as I would turn the engine on after it had been sitting cold for a long time. This makes no sense that there's no possible way it was actually overheating when the engine's been sitting cold. And so this also made sense with the jittery alarm that it was probably a wiring issue and most likely a short. A good way to check this is just by turning the key to on. When the key is on, the temperature light should be off. Ours was kind of just having a mind of its own. Sometimes it would be on, sometimes it'd be off. So I very hastily ordered a new uh, switch. This is all it is. This side screws into the port and this little piece gets the temperature reading and sends a signal through this bolt, which you, you just screw on to the, the wire that will already be there. Um, it's a pretty simple mechanism. But before I even did this, I started tracing the wire for a potential short. You only have one lead from this because this is grounded itself to the engine. So if you imagine the positive wire coming off of this, if, if that touches the engine anywhere, you're, you're basically touching positive to negative and you're gonna get a short and it's gonna trip the alarm. So I started tracing this wire back before I even replaced this and sure enough, this is the wire harness that leads to the engine panel. You can see all the wires here and it was touching right in here, just on that corner of the engine block and just sawing itself through. And that's where it shorted out. I've already rewrapped it in electrical tape and I'm gonna pin this up with some, with a zip tie to keep it off the engine block. That little point of contact was just enough to confuse me for several months. And this explains everything. This is why it was so jittery. This is why it was never a super clear signal. This is why it would sometimes be on and sometimes it wouldn't be on because it wasn't always touching the engine block. Everything fell into place. So I've wrapped that up with electrical tape really well. I'm gonna zip tie it up and out of the way of the engine and I'm gonna try and get a couple shots of all this so you can see exactly what's been going on. 